this is Sandra here welcome back to my channel or if you're new here welcome it's lovely to see you here so today's video as you will see from the title is the second part of my makeup collection if you haven't seen the previous part and you like these sort of videos I will link it up in the corner so you can check that out and in today's video you will see the rest of my collection and then also teeny tiny declutter because I got rid of a few things and I thought it's gonna be just easier to talk at the end of the video about the few bits that I'm not gonna use anymore. So stay tuned for that. But apart from that, we're gonna just jump into the video. Also, one more thing actually. <laughs> I do this all the time. But I have a makeup inventory as well and originally I mentioned in the first video that you will see this in this video as well but I decided that actually that's going to be way too long so I scrapped that idea and then the makeup inventory is coming next Monday. So my first part of the collection went up last Monday, this Monday, so today or well you might not be watching it on Monday but this is going up on the next Monday as in like today when you're watching it. So confusing. <laughs> And then the inventory is coming in next Monday. So if you wanted to see an altogether inventory of how much I have of each item, you can watch it next Monday. But yeah, without further blabbering, we're gonna jump into my collection and at the end I'm gonna see you again to talk about the few bits that I decluttered. Let's go. Okay, so we're just gonna pick it off where we left it and don't mind my legs and my sausage dog blanket, you know, I just need to keep warm but the next drawer after the foundations is my like cream eyeshadow slash glitter kind of drawer and just like in the foundation drawer in the back i have a few eyelashes so i have this eyelash holder where i just normally have the eyelashes that are currently i'm not using but that are still okay to use so at the moment i i think i have only one pair in here that's just sort of freely floating around and I think I just don't have the box for this anymore hence it's in here then I have another pair of Ardell wispies because these are lovely I have a pair of Eiler lashes in there as well and these are quite big and fluffy and for some reason I decided to put these back in the box rather than in here sometimes I like to keep them in the box just so I still know which ones they are otherwise if I just put it in this one I forget and I also have then a pair of well not a pair <laughs> but a set of Arda Mega Flare so these are just nice and singular ones if I want then I can just spice up any look with these without it being too much and that's all I have in the back let's start with this side so i have a clean sweep i'm not even sure it's a brush pad it's called and this is just really nice to clean my brushes in between shadows obviously this is not going to be good for deep cleaning but as you can see it's just a really nice little sponge and i recently cleaned it as well so it's ready to be used as you can see just a, like a normal sponge so it's just quite nice, it cleans the brushes, you just have to swirl them around and they are ready to be used. So I like to keep it on the side, you know, for the times when I want to use the same eyeshadow brush over and over again for one look. And this way I don't have to deep clean them. And then I have two huge pots of, well I assume we can call them pigments. They're both from Marin and these are the metallic powders so I have a liquid for them as well and basically you can either use them by themselves or you can mix them with the mixing liquid and then you can use them as a body paint In that's how I used it in the past and if I open it up you can see this one is a really nice silver and it's really full it still has the shape of the lid in there and then this one is I think it's called lavender yes this one I used a bit more. This has quite a bit missing. I'm not sure the camera will actually focus on it. This one is well loved. And they're both beautiful products. If you're looking to some bits that you can use on your body, if you go out from somewhere, these are really, really good. Then in the next little container down there, actually this was housing some Ferrero Rocher chocolate. And these I love to keep makeup in. They are so handy. So in this one I keep most of my eyeshadow sticks. So I have one from Bobbi Brown that was in my project pen before. This one is called Heather Steel, so I'm not going to talk a lot about it. But I can link it in the corner for you. Then I have two of the Iconic Milk makeup sticks. 
or a jumbo eye pencils and look how tiny this one is I mean obviously this one is still a full size but this one is so tiny I remember back in the day I got like a pack of three and this one is almost gone but I know it's nice to have this one to get through they are still really nice but I feel like people don't talk about it as much anymore then these three are from Ilamasca and these are the sketch sticks I don't think they do them anymore I can never find them on the website but I have a blue one that's called free and orange one that's called trends and then a yellow one that's called higher oh did you just see that the yellow one just fell out oh no oh well it still feels really nice and creamy next moving on i have cream shadows obviously i have those ones are cream as well the one in the stick form but then i have the traditional ones in the pan or like in the little jar and let me start with the one that's the most special i guess out of all of them this is from ilamasca and it's one of the liquid metals and this one is in the shade gold and i've talked about this in the products i organically hit pen on video i'm not sure how easy it is to see but i did hit pen on this and you can use this on the eyes on the lips run them through the brows and it has a really strong payoff it's a bit more greasy as well than, let's say, some of the other shadows that are out there. So it's not the most long-lasting, but look at that payoff. It's so nice. And I remember they used to have a palette as well with loads of different colours. But again, I don't know if that was limited or not. But it's beautiful. Next, I have three of the Maybelline Color Tattoos. And these are a bit old, but recently I opened them and mixed them up and they still seem to be working. So this one is the cult classic on and on bronze. I don't think I have to introduce this to anyone. Is my camera focusing? Probably not. That's super annoying. But this one is a really big cult classic product. Then the next one is a bit darker. This one is the metallic pomegranate and this used to be one of my favorites. And it's just a really nice purpley burgundy kind of shade. I really, really like this. And I use this quite a lot, but obviously it's a cream shadow. Those always go really slow. And then the last one is in the shade pink gold. So it's just your typical light pinky kind of color. It's quite nice under eyeshadows as a base as well. Now I feel like soon I will have to get rid of those, but for now I remix them. Oops, sorry. I remixed them and they are still okay to use so I will keep them for a little bit longer. Another pinky one I have is from the brand Boutique. Again, Boutique is... Oh, that's a bit dusty. Boutique is Sainsbury's own brand and this one is a more jelly kind of formula which is a bit more unique so it's a bit more bouncy which I'm not sure you're going to be able to see. And this one just has a nice pinky sheen to it as well and it's quite hard to see but maybe if I turn my hand you can see and catch the little bit of a glow it gives the whole point of this is that you should be able to use it both on your cheeks and on your eyes I'm not a big fan of this on the cheeks but you know I'm just gonna use it on the eyes when I use it the other two I have in here one is from Chanel and this was a limited edition this one is their iconic shade Rouge Noir in a cream shadow. Recently I opened this one as well just to give it a good mix. And this one is actually not far off from the metallic pomegranate. Let me get that as well. So it's just a slightly, slightly darker version. So this one is Chanel, this one is Maybelline. It's a little bit darker and a little bit more purple, but they're quite similar. Once they're on the hand, the Chanel one is a lot darker, that's Chanel, that's Maybelline. But to be fair, if you use them as a base, I don't think it's going to make much of a difference. And this one was limited edition, so, you know, you're not going to be able to get your hands on it anymore. But it was beautiful. And this one, the Chanel one, was always a drier formula as well. I feel like once you applied it, it was less creamy and more powdery, which makes it slightly easier to blend. But obviously it came with a much bigger price tag. I remember when I bought it, I was so happy. The next one is the Mina, I think. I never know if it's like 3 Ina or Mina or I never know. But I think it's called Mina and it's a cream eyeshadow in the shade 307. And this is the most vibrant purple cream shadow you've seen in your life. 
let me swatch it for you so you see what I mean it's super duper creamy as well look at that it's so freaking bright and every time I look at it I tell myself I have to use it and then I forget but you know what I'm gonna leave it out on my table so I remember it look at that it's so beautiful it's such a full color pigment I think they closed at a London store last time I was in Covent Garden I'm pretty sure it was not there anymore so I think I don't know can you still find them online or is the brand not around anymore I don't know but that color is super beautiful and all their shadows were quite similar when it came to cream shadows at least I think this is the only product and no I, I, this is the only product I have anymore I had an eyeshadow that was quite nice as well but I just gave it to my mom but this one look at it it's so so nice but let's move on, otherwise I'm going to talk about this the whole day. The last cream shadow I have is from Essence and it's called Sun Kissed. And it's just a beautiful bronzy kind of colour. Now I don't have a lot left. I think it's hard to see. But I don't have a lot left and it's a beautiful coppery bronzy kind of colour. I should really crack this out and use it up because there's not a lot in there. And it's such a nice payoff. It was a quite moussey texture as well. And it was a limited edition, so it's not going to be around anymore, but it's so, so nice. The next shadow in here is a loose shadow. And if you can see, I have my own little <laughs> label on there. It's the Sigma Over a C eyeshadow, and it used to be like a single shadow, but in Smash. So I put it in a Benefit eye cream, and I keep forgetting that it's there. You can see all the little broken bits. Back then, I had no clue how to like repress shadows. I could probably do it by now. But never mind. And let me just try to swatch it for you. There we go. It's one of those mermaidy colours as well. But because in this jar I barely crack it out, it's a really nice formula though. This is the only shadow I ever tried from Sigma. But I would happily get more. I smashed it, it didn't come broken. And look at it. The sheen it has to it as well. It's a bit yellowy, it's a bit greeny, it's a bit tealy. It's super nice and um, it's in here because it's too tall to go where my other shadows are but the single ones so it just lives here with the cream shadows because I couldn't find a better space for it. Then next I have three liquid shadows. So I have the Urban Decay Liquid Moon Dust and this one is in the shade Vega. So it's this really nice purpley bluey iridescent kind of color and I used so much of it it doesn't seem like it but you can definitely see through this little jar already and look at that it's a bit purpley it's a bit bluey it's so so nice it's a bit more opaque at first but you can definitely build it up then we have a Stila shimmer and glow liquid eyeshadow in the shade Pigal and this was in one of my project pens as well. I can't remember now in which one, but I'm going to link it up in the corner. And look at that as well. Now, this one is the complete opposite of the Moon Dust shadow. This is opaque even with one swatch and you have to blend it out really quickly. Otherwise, it can dry and then it's a bit harder. But it's beautiful though. It could be quite nice as well to cut out some cut crease to build up some nice strong pigment on top of it. And then the last one is a mini. This is the Stila Glitter and Glow in the shade Golden Girl. I had Kitten before that I used up. And it came in a set of three. The third one I don't have anymore. I gave it to my boyfriend's sister because it was a more silvery shade that I would not necessarily use. This one is a more browny gold. Oh no, it's getting dry. To be fair, I used a lot of it as well. You can already see through in gaps the shadow. But to be honest, there we go. You can see it on the bottom there glittering. I think I will have to throw it away as soon as it's getting quite dry. To be honest, I would not get a full size of these though. They are drying up so quickly and I know a lot of other people say that as well. The shadows, those are fine. But the glitters, they dry up so quickly. Pigel is still the same as ever. And the other one is a lot drier and I got them at the same time, although I use the glitter a lot more, but they just dry up so quickly. So if you see them in the set of three, like in the minis, that's perfect. I'm not sure I would spend it a full size because you never get enough use out of it. I mean, if you use glitter every day, go for it, but I know I don't. 
then I have two Urban Decay Shadow primers in here. The purple one is the original primer potion and then this one on the bottom is in the shade Sin. And this one is just a really nice blurring one and I think, I can't remember if this is the new version or this one. Someone can you let me know? This one comes with a little nozzle and that one comes with a doe foot applicator, I don't know. I like these both. I think I preferred Eden to any of these because this one I don't get enough use out of even though, look, I used a lot of it. But because it's glittery, I don't use it as often. And the original one is nice, but I liked Eden because it had a bit of colour to it. So it was always nice and neutralising on my lid. But these are okay as well. And then I have a little pouch as well from Sin that's just a sample. But because I have Sin, I never opened it. It's quite old though, but I mean, I never opened it, so I don't know. <laughs> Once I get to it, we'll, we'll see. And then moving on to here, let me open it up so you can see the contents a bit better. So this has all my eyebrow product in there. On the top, I have a NYX Tame and Frame brow pomade and this lasts ages like every other brow pomade it is a bit dried out now but whenever i use it i just put a bit of the inglot duraline in there and it helps to revive it i find that the color on this is perfect this is in the shade i think espresso yes espresso and it's perfect it's a really dark brown but it's not too red, it's not too brown, it's not too black, it's just the perfect dark brown, which let me tell you, is quite hard to find. But that's the only brow pomade I have at the moment. I never tried the Anastasia one, but that's on my list as well. Then let me get all the eyebrow gels. Now in the other drawer, I have the Vet and Wild Mega Clear one because I want to finish that up. But apart from that, I have three eyebrow gels in here. The first one, to be fair, I think you've seen me using all of these apart from that. But the first one is the Essence Make Me Brow in the shade Brownie Brows. This is perfect. I love it. Then the next one is the Booty Eyebrow Defining Gel, which is actually really nice as well. It has a really long but quite thin brush, which is actually really nice to use. And then the last one is one that I had for a while now, but I haven't opened it yet because I have the other ones. But this is the collection in Credit Brow. And in the shop, when I opened it, it had a really nice small wand that seemed to be precise enough. And again, the essence and this one are tinted. And then the boutique one is clear. I like to have both options for depending on, you know, what brow look I'm going for. I can have a nice use for both of them. And this one is in the shade Dark Brunette. So this one I haven't opened it yet, but I'm sure I'm gonna get there soon. And then I have three eyebrow pencils. This one is from number seven. It's the Beautiful Brow Sculpting Pencil, and it has the pencil on one end and then the brush on the other one, which I love these sort of pencils. It's just really handy. But the color, because it's black, sometimes is a bit too cool on me. The next one is from Boutique. And this one only has the pencil. The color on it is great, but then this one doesn't have the brush on the other end, so that can be a bit annoying sometimes. So this would not be one I travel with, but I like the color of it. And then this one is the Charlotte Tilbury Brow Lift. Now this one has the pencil on one end, the brush on the other end, and then it has a highlighter in the middle, which it's a little bit too dark on me, let me show you. That one is the highlight right there, and you can see that depending on how I'm turning my hand, it can look like it casts like a shadow there. It's a bit dark, and mine is in the shade Naomi. And I think when they did this, they had it in mind that whoever has that dark hair will have dark skin too, but I have really light skin and fairly dark hair, so I just wish that they a, either it didn't have the highlighter in there, or B, you could customize which one you put it in there, because for someone like me who has really light skin but fairly dark hair, the color of the pencil is perfect, but the highlighter I get no use out of because it's too dark on me, so I can't really use it to highlight my brows. Maybe if I do like a really coppery look, I can incorporate it even in the inner corner, but honestly, 
Most of the time it's too dark, so it's just a waste of product in there for me. So I just wish that they really thought that through. I'm sure it works for a lot of people with maybe lighter hair and lighter pencils. But for me personally, it just doesn't work out. Now this middle one brings a lot of joy. So this has glitters and pigments. And oh, they are so beautiful. So let me get the two from the back. These are both from MAC. And this one is a pigment in the shade Copper. I actually used a lot of it. Let me show you. It's so empty. Okay, maybe it will be hard to see, but about half of it is gone. And that's mainly because someone knocked it over and poured over half of it. But you know, you will never use this up. The packaging though, these, I love it. It's so sleek. And then this one is a glitter from MAC again, obviously. And it's in the shade gold. And I had it in a project pen as well. So I'm not sure you can see, but it's already down here. I used up a lot of it. And this was in my 12 pens of Christmas project pen. Again, I can link it if you're interested. But mainly I use this on my nails. I find that sometimes it's a bit too chunky for me to put it on my eyes. But it's beautiful being used on the nails as well and super festive. And the next one is from Inglot. And this is the... It's just called Body Sparkles in the shade 54. This is more of a white glitter with some peachy and yellowy pigments running through it. And I'm pouring it out. Yet yeah, I have to say this Inglot container is quite fiddly as well. Like all the time I open it, I... Oh my god, now I have glitter everywhere. I knew this was gonna happen. Yeah, this Inglot one doesn't have the best packaging. Okay, now I'm gonna glitter for the next three days. <laughs> now this one is one of my personal favorites. It's the Stargazer Glitter Shaker in the shade... I don't actually know the shade name. Can't find the shade name, but look at it. This is a beautiful peachy glitter, but it has a bit of like green and gold reflect running through it. It's so, so nice. I need to crack this out a lot more open. Oh, there's a fair bit of missing already. I think I used it a few times on my eyelid. It's so nice. And I especially love pairing it with this one. This is from Kryolan. And this is the Satin Powder in the shade 331. And it's a really nice peachy neutral kind of color. But when you blend it out on the skin... The packaging of these is not my favorite, I have to say. But when you blend it out on the eyes, it just gives this really nice natural, there you go, setting finish. So you can really easily get like that wet kind of eye look with this. And it's so gorgeous. So, so gorgeous. I highly recommend this to anyone. And Cryolin is fairly affordable as well. It's more of a pro brand. But you can find it online. Now, if you live in London like I do, they have a store in Covent Garden. And I know they have a few stores around the globe, so you just need to go on their website and check it where. But I highly recommend their products. They are really nice. There's another eye dust from Stargazer. And this one is more of a white, icy kind of color. Then I have a random stack of glitters that I got from my friend. So it has like a gold on the bottom. I think the bottom one is a MAC old gold, I think. And then I think the other two are Hank and Henry. They're just different colored um, pigments. And I think this one is either from eBay or from Stargazer. But it doesn't have the Stargazer logo. So I will say, or maybe Etsy. It's just a really nice chunky orangey, whoops. <laughs> orangey yellow glitter that I would only use on my face. Just because I'm not sure it's safe to use around the eyes. I'm not sure it's a cosmetic glitter. So I would not risk it cutting my eye but it will be gorgeous on the face. Then I have two glitters from Kryolan and they are the polyester glimmer in pastel blue and pastel yellow. Now these can be a bit tricky to use just because when you look at them, you're like, oh yeah, it's blue and yellow. But both of them have green shimmers running through it. So when you put it on the eyes, if you're not careful, it will come out a lot more green than you want. So you have to be careful of how you use them. But once you get the hang of it, they look really, really nice. And again, these are huge. They will last you for ages. And then I also have this chunky glitter. I wonder if I got this from Etsy. I can't remember. But this one is just a really nice star-shaped glitter. So you could actually carefully use this on the eyes, but you would have to make sure you apply them one by one. Maybe along a liner in the crease that could be really nice or just in the corner of the eye. 
these have a nice silver shine to them but then they also has like a purpley greeny reflect or yellowy depends how the light hits it it's super cute and then the last two i have are from Illamasca. again the packaging is not my favorite and i have two shades a red one that's called berber or berber i never know how to pronounce it and then the other one is they're both pure pigments but the other one is in the shade Beguile? I have no clue how to pronounce it, I'm so sorry. But this is more of a white pigment that's actually quite nice in the inner corners of the eye as well. Sorry, I'm not going to open it because these two have quite a tricky packaging as well. And sometimes they can go all over the place. But this little section makes me so happy. But I don't reach for it often enough because it's so messy. And, you know, I'm not wearing glitter on an everyday, although sometimes I wish I would because they are so nice. And then this one is just a random assortment of bits. So I have my duo eyelash glue in there. I have my Shoe Mara eyelash curlers that I don't use often because my lashes are quite curly. But I quite like to use this to press together fake lashes with my own lashes. That's my tip to you. It just helps to, you know, melt them together nicely. Then I have a mixing medium. That's the NYX Multitasker. And also... My Too Faced Lash Glue lives here as well. And then I just have two um, pair of tweezers. One from Barbara Carranza that I just mostly use to apply my lashes. And then the other one is from a brand called Wiggy? Twiggy? Probably Twiggy, just the T is quite gone. But nothing overly exciting. And that's all that's in this drawer. Now this is just from like a kitchen section of a store. This one again is from a chocolate from Ferro Rochers and this one is just the top of a really nice box that I repurposed to hold my things. In the next drawer down I have blushes, bronzers, highlighters and lip products. So let's start with this section. So in here I have, let's start with the highlighters. So I have one from Illamasca. This is the Beyond Powder. I'm not sure about the shade anymore because it's gone from the back, but it's a slightly darker highlighter that I can only use in the summer. It's beautiful though. It's such a nice formula. It's huge as well. So it will last for a long time. And they just actually came out with the liquid versions that I would be really interested in because they are nice, but they look nice anyway. The next section is full of Becca highlighters. So this one is the Glow Dust Powder in the shade Champagne Pop. This was limited edition in the summer. And it looks a bit dark when it's in there, but actually once it's on my skin, it works really, really well. And this is the one that I had a backup of in the top, which I think I'm just going to give to my friend because this has so much product in there. It has... how much product? 15 grams, so you know, I will never get through it. Then this is the actual champagne pop. This is the regular champagne pop color, just in a limited edition packaging. And I love this one. It's super nice, although funnily enough, this is not my favorite. My favorite is the newest limited edition from Becca, which is this one. This is in the shade Pure Pearl. And this just gives a really nice wet glow to the skin. It has a slight pink tint to it, but it looks more wet. Let me see if I can show you on my hand. I find that highlighters can be a bit tricky. Do you see that nice glow on my hand? Oh, it's super pretty. I'm sure you've seen this in action. In action? In action quite a few times. And also I love the white and purple packaging. I know it's not everyone's cup of tea. But I personally really like it. It's just a bit annoying because it's not flat. So it keeps moving around on the table. But it's beautiful. And then from the regular line in a full size I have Moonstone. That's fairly well loved. It's just one of those iconic colours that I feel like everyone knows. It's almost like Champagne Pop, just lighter. But they're both quite glowy. And then I have another limited edition. This one is the shade Royal Glow. Now this one is really similar to opal and I can only use it in the summer when I have a bit of a tan, otherwise it's a touch too dark on me sometimes. Just because it has a slight bronzy undertone to it. 
I'm not sure how much you can see it, but it's down there. You can see that when I turn my hand, sometimes you can actually see the line. And that's a good indicator that it's a bit too dark. But it's really close to opal, which is this highlighter. I had it in a kit with the liquid. The liquid on, I'm already used. And this one, well... As you can see, it's still really well loved. Now again, usually I can only get away using it with a bronzer or in the summer, but as you can see, it still is a well loved highlighter. Next up, I have the Christmas collection from last year when I had four minutes together. I have three because the last one was opal and I already had it, so I gave that one to my friend. Then here we have Prismatic Amethyst that I love using as an eyeshadow. It's just a white that has a really nice pinky purpley shift to it. Then we have Vanilla Quartz, which is one of my other favorites apart from the new one. It's beautiful. As you can see, all of these have pen on them for a reason. Well, at least the mini ones. And then the last one is Rose Quartz. That's actually beautiful with a pinky blush. As you can see, that has pen on it too. I told you, I love these. And then the last product in the row is still from Becca and this is a blush in the shade Dahlia. And if you look at it, you will see that it's quite dark. So I don't use it as a blush, but I love, love, love it as an eyeshadow. And there's another blush from Becca that's called Blushed Copper. Now that's going to be my next one because that's beautiful as an eyeshadow as well. Not like I don't have enough eyeshadows, but... Hey ho! I can't really use this as a blush, or if I do, it has to be with a super light hand. So I usually just don't bother, but as an eyeshadow, it's beautiful. In the second row, then we move on. In the back, I have a bronzer from Bourjois. This is really old. This is the Delise de Soleil. I never learned French, so if I butcher it, I'm sorry. It's just a nice dark bronzer. I'm not sure why I bought it. It's so dark. So at the moment it has a nice size dip in it just because I mix it with some other highlighters and you will see it in a minute where it is. Other highlighters, no other bronzers. I loved the mirror as well that it's this this one that like flicks around to every direction. I find that super clever. I wish more powders had that but then here I had a little brush that was almost useless so it's a bit too bulky. But I wish more products had this like rotating mirror packaging because that's brilliant. The next one is one of my favorite bronzers and it's from Bare Minerals and it's the Invisible Bronze Bronzer and mine is in the shade 10. And this was a baked product but I repressed it. So you can see there's barely any left in there. It truly is well loved. It has a slight sheen to it but not too much. It's such a nice bronzer. And I think they still have them, but I think they changed the shade names because now when I look, it says something like light and medium. So I don't know if it's the same formula, but I would say give these a swatch if you see them because they are beautiful. Then the next is not new to anyone. This was in my Lust for Lux project pen. Again, I can link it in the cards. And this one is the Charlotte Tilbury Film Star Bronze and Glow. And look at that. So the highlighter, obviously it has pen on it as well, but the bronzer is actually not the original bronzer. So this is a mix of the Bourjois bronzer I showed you, a little bit of my um, Fenty, no, the whole of the Fenty bronzer, a little bit of the Bourjois and, oh, I think a little bit of the Boutique bronzer. So it's a Franken bronzer, if you will, which actually works quite nice, but I just thought I'm going to press some powder in there so I can carry it with me when I'm traveling so I can use both sides and it's really nice but again I mentioned it before I'm gonna mention it now I just wish you can get these two separately because the bronzer I went through quite quickly whereas obviously from the highlighter even though I hit pen on it and there's a nice size dip there's still so much product left in there you have to say though I have a lot of highlighters but if you see quite a few have pen on them so I'm doing good but it's really nice I just wish I could buy the bronzer separately and the next bronzer is from Boutique and when I had my first impression I was not a big fan of it and I used it since a few times. It's okay, it didn't blow me away but you know, it's fine. I will just try to get a bit more use out of it but I find that quite often it gets hard pen and I don't know why because I don't even really touch it but even when I you reach for it, it just, I don't know how. It easily gets hard pen. It was not expensive so it's fine. 
Next one is a highlighter again. I have a lot of highlighters. When you see a number in my inventory, it will shock you. It definitely showed me. But this one is the Essence Prismatic Rainbow Highlighter. And I mean, it's a rainbow, just like the name suggests. And you would think that you never get enough use out of these, but the red one is really nice with like red toned eyeshadows. This peachy bit is really nice on like a peachy blush. These two you can mix together and get something greeny or if you use these shade eyeshadows, it's really nice in the corner. So actually I reach for this quite a bit and I have another one as well that's similar that you will see in a bit. I don't like them, obviously it's not something I reach for every day, although if you mix them together it's a yellowy kind of colour, so you can technically get away with it. The next highlighter is a cult classic, this is the Balm Mary Luminizer. At this point I don't think there's anyone who's a makeup lover who doesn't know what this is. <laughs> Such a cult classic for a reason, it's a beautiful glow. This was my very first high-end highlighter and look how well loved this one is as well. Now this one has got repressed at one point. I can't remember if it's because I hit pen or because I broke it. But since then I widened the pen as well so much. I love this. This is still a beautiful highlighter. Next one again, cult classic. But the brand I'm a bit angry with is Physician's Formula and it's the Butter Bronzer. And I'm still mad that they're not cruelty free anymore just when I could get their products because in the UK you still can get this in the store but in Hungary funnily enough they started selling them so I was so happy when I went home that I can get these and then now they're not cruelty free it's a really nice bronzer though I like the scent as well it's nice and coconutty and it just smells like summer <laughs> and the bronzer is a really nice shade as well I have the heavy in the shade light bronzer it's just a shame that they're not cruelty free anymore and then an old Physicians Formula product I got from Amazon back in the day is the Happy Booster Glow and Mood Boosting Powder in the shade Light Bronzer. Now this one is even lighter than the Light Bronzer from the Butter Bronzer range. And as you can see, it's super cute. It has all these little hearts in it. It has like a pink one and then some bronzier ones. It's really nice. Maybe a bit easier to see now. It's really nice, especially on the days in the winter when I'm super pale. This is a nice bronzer and I had it for a while. I keep using it. You know, it's nothing to write home about, but it's a really nice light bronzer. If you're pale, you would enjoy this. But again, I don't know if they still do them and they're not cruelty free. So I don't really want to recommend them too much, even though it's not the product's fault. It's the brand. Then I have this highlighter from Revolution. That's the strobe highlighter in the shade Moon Glow Lights. And on the front it says strobe highlighter, but then on the back it says vivid baked highlighter. So I'm not too sure which one is the name. And it has this really nice wavy pattern. But I have to say the highlight in there is so weird. It has a little bit of a glow to it, but it's not... I'm not sure what it's supposed to do. It's right there. I'm not even sure it's going to be enough to, like, glow on my skin. It almost feels like a glowy setting powder, but no, it's a bit too pink for that, so I'm not too sure what to do with this. Because if you apply too much, it looks a bit powdery. So I don't know. Anyone experienced the same with these Revolution highlighters? I just don't know what to make of it. When I initially swatched it... Whoopsie. When I initially swatched it in the store, it was nice, but now that I have it at home, it just doesn't fully seem to work out. The next one is from Inglot. It's the Powerpuff Girls collection, and it's the highlighter in the shade Friends Forever. Forever Friends, sorry. And this one is super intense. Now, it has this little powder puff on top of it. I'm not sure if it's just because it's a Powerpuff Girls collection. Super useless. And I don't love the shaker formula. But the highlighter itself, if you, if you like an intense highlight, you're going to like this one. I don't know if the camera can pick it up. Probably not. It's having trouble where to focus, but it's right there and it's so beautiful. Oh, my legs. Ow. 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 <laughs> it's really nice. And this has quite a lot of product in there as well. But the packaging on this I find is a bit more fiddly than, let's say, the Becca Loose highlighter. It's super cute though with the Powder Puff Girls and that's why I picked it up. Let's not be, you know, funny about it. We all know that's why I picked it up. This has 1.4 grams of product in there. Okay guys, so if you're wondering why I don't look the same as in the beginning of the video, 
I just realized that this video is getting a bit way too long. Altogether, my footage, by the time I cut it, is still an hour and a half. And I thought, you know what, no one's gonna sit here for an hour and a half and watch a movie length video of just my collection. So <laughs> I cut it in half. If you want to see more, I usually don't upload on Tuesdays, but I decided to upload the second half tomorrow. It's gonna go up at 5 p.m. well, London time. So if you're interested to see that, come back for tomorrow. But that's it for today. If you like this, please give it a thumbs up and please consider subscribing. But for now, I'm gonna go. Have a lovely day and see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.